So some pe- some things I tell people, right, is it's not about how you sing in the sun, it's how you dance in the rain. And what I mean by that is if half your life is going to be rain and not sun, you can either go indoors and it's raining and then you come out when it's sunny or you can make the most of all types of weather. And actually being outside in the rain, it's a really an amazing feeling, which most people don't experience. Yes, you're all wet, but then you go and you have a nice warm shower. It makes your body feel things that you're not used to feeling. We're just too comfortable all the time with like a brolly or a coat in the warm going outside the power of the rain it's amazing yeah definitely it's actually raining here right now and I just I just went to go stand outside and listen and it's so peaceful it always brings me so much peace and just like just connecting with that element of of any kind of like weather like rain wind I always just like go out and sit and absorb whatever like energy is coming through that and just it's that connection because especially right now during quarantine um, everyone's, oh, it's raining. I got to stay inside, but it's, <laughs> I can't stay inside all day. I'll go crazy. So yeah, it's like, it's just, it's just water. We shower. Like there's nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> yeah. Like if it's, there's so much sound vibration from the rain, right? Hitting down on the trees, the floor, that's an energy that you don't even realize is having an effect on your body. Like we're feeling energy. Like when you see storm chasers go and chase storms, they love that energy from the from the clouds and the wind and the rain. There's something so powerful about nature. And I remember at Christmas time, there was a massive storm and I stood in the middle of my field, not my field, but a field near me. It was pitch black, right? It was pissing it down. It was so dark. It was so windy. I stood in the middle. I put my hands up and just sort mm. of let the rain come down on me. Most amazing feeling ever. It's just like, mm. it's similar to the feeling a storm chaser would get apart from it. it was just um a windy day but it was phenomenal and people really miss out not going out in the rain like if you wear a brolly your clothes don't get wet yes if you're wearing a a jacket or a hoodie you do get a bit wet wet and it's not very nice but if you have a brolly subject to not being really windy it feels incredible the smells after a hot day and then the Mm -hmm. rain the wind it's just an amazing feeling which we don't often feel because we're too comfortable indoors Mm -hmm. yeah we love the comfort we love the like warm and heat and I don't want to go out and be uncomfortable. Yeah, totally. Totally. I where do that. you, um, where do you, where do you live? Australia? So I'm in Canada. Oh. I'm in Canada in like Ontario, about an hour away from Toronto. And yeah, I wish I was in Australia right now. Um, but yeah, so I was in Colombia for um, a couple weeks before like everything started happening with Corona. And then I um, made the decision to come home and be here with my family and Yes, yeah, so this is where I'm from. What's the weather like in, in Canada? Is it like a mixture of hot and cold? Because here it's just, it's literally, it's kind of 50-50. In fact, it's probably more rainy than sunny. Yeah, it is. It's kind of up and down. Um, today's been, today's, yeah, like I said, rainy. But um, yeah, April's been strange. We we also got snow. We got snow a couple weeks ago. Like <laughs> it's it's up and down and all over the place. But yeah, there's been some sunny days and it's it's felt good, but I know I can feel everyone just like, especially I live in a, like a a townhouse complex and we're all kind of, we all share like the same yard and you can just see everyone in in, like their homes and no one wants to be outside when it's rainy and it's just, uh, yeah, it kind of feels like low vibe kind of day, but I love it. (laughs) You know, the smell that you get when it's been really hot and it rains, do you reckon, Mm -hmm. does that come from the tarmac or is that just the smell that's coming from the earth after it's like cooled down? You know, the smell I mean, Mm -hmm. like a hot Mm -hmm. day cold smell like would you get that smell and say I don't know the ocean by by the sand or is it Mm. simply from like tarmac and man-made stuff no I think I think like I was in Costa Rica and it rained like we had one night where it just torrential downpoured and everything was just soaked in mud and it that same yeah I don't know I think it's from it's just from the rain I don't know I'm I'm no I'm no expert on this but um yeah I think that smell is uh it's it's everywhere it doesn't matter where you are or like what kind of there's so much amazing nutrients from soil, right? And, you know, like I've seen like tribes put soil on their face. And first thing I used to think is, why well, you put mud in your face, you're going to get spots mm. and make it dirty. And I feel <laughs> like that's just a myth that's like handed down. So like companies can sell us spot cream. Like if your face mm-hmm. is dirty, then you're going to get spots. So we think, OK, mud is dirt. I can't get mud on my face. But you look at mud and how much nutrients and of what is in it, like trees, plants, just everything. That surely mm-hmm. should be good for our face, yet we don't put mud in our face. You know what I mean? Like, Definitely. it has to be a myth because it does have such goodness. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. 
Yeah, I know. When I, I was younger and growing up, I had so much going on in my body and like um, nutritionally, there was so much up and down and birth control. And I think everything kind of plays a part to like skin conditions and acne and all that kind of stuff. And when I, you know, proactive, all those companies marketing to young girls and, and, and men as well. And yeah, I think, um, you know, we kind of, we think, oh, like how could, how could these like simple herbs or simple like ingredients help me? But my skin revolutionized when I changed my diet and when I went to just like simple skincare and like not overloading my face with um, different kinds of ingredients or perfumes or fragrance, whatever it is. And I think we just, it's just, it's, it's marketing. It's like, it's sold it's soul test like everything you know like you need the seven step process to get rid of your pimples you need to like take this and take that and really it's so it's just such a return to like what nature intended like yeah. birth control obviously controls and affects and imba- imbalances like hormones mm-hmm. right and mm-hmm. hormones is you know say control stress levels and stress creates pressure under the skin and it needs a release and he does mm-hmm. it through spots so i had Tourette's growing up and i was on medication to control the twitching and that slowed my brain down and all my questions mm-hmm. about is there a god chicken or the egg spirituality there's more to life i couldn't process <laughs> all my thoughts because the medication slowed my brain down as a result a lot of stress from trying to work out stuff which i couldn't work out used to build up and so I had really 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 bad acne like the worst you'd ever seen boils mm-hmm. on my face through the twitching and the stress of trying to work out stuff and I came off the medication at 21 when I was a license watch law of attraction videos the secret power of the mind and stuff mm-hmm. came off the medication overnight in three weeks no joke my twitching stopped because I thought about all the stuff I needed to and my spots went after three weeks and I didn't use any face creams it even washed my mm-hmm. face it even get my face wet in the shower for months and months and months I had no spots and I was in a meditative state for all that time no brain activity didn't wash my face all the things I told about wash your face before bed never <laughs> did any of that I just didn't I just stopped thinking I just meditated mm-hmm. no thoughts because thoughts is stress like fuck how am I gonna I hope am I gonna be late for work get a job because a boyfriend like me it's a shit that's constantly like creating negative energy and mm-hmm. my spots disappeared literally in three weeks so everything is man-made everything's marketing totally. everything's bullshit and mm-hmm. every problem i believe is is created in the brain and resolved by meditation because i killed totally. my meditation i cured acne with meditation and i was in mm-hmm. meditation for medication for everything like the spots so many spot creams herbal creams fucking try this for twitching <laughs> try like black coke so and chinese ridiculous. tea None of it worked apart from when it came off the meds, then the twitching stopped. So it's mm. all a load of bollocks. Yeah, just it's just masking. And it's it's so like awful to see. But when when you come out of that moment and you break free of that, like I feel like it's this barrier, like fog, where you just are you're not able to see what's actually going on and you break through the fog, you're just like, holy shit. Like this is reality. This is like this is what I wasn't able to see. And it's just like I feel like the it's the forgetting or being in that state of like contrast, light and dark, whatever. And we have the contrast to be able to like be fully in that other alternate state of like total gratitude and feeling like, holy shit, I am so aware of what's happening. I'm so aware of my mind. I'm so aware of things I put into it. I'm so aware of the people I surround myself with. Like, um, yeah, it's kind of like those dark night of the soul moments where you need to have that like grueling, like, um difficult period to come out of it and be like oh my god I am god you know literally like when (laughs) like looking back to how as you said it's like it's like a fog it's like I was deaf Mm -hmm. my whole life and all of a sudden I could hear for the first time right I've been Mm -hmm. told you're never gonna hear again right (laughs) when I suddenly became aware I look back now and I think what I was like compared to how I was now I, I can envision the difference of so unaware of everything Mm -hmm. And then being like, holy fucking shit, everything. You literally become God from death, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, how can that, how can that happen in such a short period of time? That happened for me in three weeks time, literally. Three weeks Mm -hmm. time, came off the medication, learned all this power of the mind, amazing shit, worked all my shit. And I was God in three weeks. Like, how can that happen in three weeks? How can I be this person for 20 years of my life and then Mm -hmm. be this new person, which is what I was seeking my whole life in in seconds? Like, it's crazy the difference in such a short period of time. How can you suddenly like be so foggy and then it's like clear it's like a storm and then yeah. it's blue sky how the fuck does that happen but that's that's the same as life isn't it a storm and then there's blue sky it's a build-up of something and heat and whatever and then it just disappears 
and ironically mm. because we are part of nature we are no different to that that process of like this and that negative positive yin and yang mm. um Hot, yeah, cold, I think like egg. life, especially for me, what's been true for me the past couple of weeks, especially, but um, definitely the like the, the concentration of the past couple of years has just been that realization that life is just like remembering that we're God or like having those realizations that we always were like we we never were those things that we thought or those like those like he- the heaviness or like the the like um the old stories or like bad thoughts or self insecurities like we never were that we always were like the god you know what i mean it's just it's just realizing that and taking the time to actually step into knowing that and then you have these situations in life where life hands you like the opportunity to know yourself as that and then you just it just clicks and you remember and you have these moments where you remember then you have these moments where you sometimes forget but you like then you just the remembering just becomes that much better. <laughs> Literally, it goes back to like years and years ago. Somebody knows that there's a cave full of diamonds and they say, oh, there might be a cave that way. And they fuck off left. And then the people mm. like take all the, the diamonds on the right hand side. Somebody became aware that when you trust the voice in your head to find food, for example, rather than listening to, listening to somebody else saying where the mm-hmm. food is, they realize that you have the answers to everything. And it's like every time somebody came here, you pushed them that way. You didn't tell them to trust the voice in their head. They just kept following. And all those people followed the follower who was following the follower. And that person who trusted his voice in his head, God, the leader of the pack, has all the wealth. And so now mm-hmm. years, years have evolved later, you've got all these governments and big tribes and rich people and all the people at the bottom just following the follower who's following the follower. Mm-hmm. And they just go around in circles, like, try this, try that, try this, try that. This doesn't work, try this. Just fucking go around in circles. Like, you need to have a word with God in their head, right? <laughs> and then and they're all the answers. And it's not that there's a God or whatever. It's just, just listen to the own voice in your head. But ironically, mm. that voice in your head is made up of everyone else's voice. So mm. if you're a negative person who's following, you can't start listening to that voice because that voice will be like, you're stupid, you're fat, you're ugly, you're useless. Because that's what your boss said, your grandma said, your cousin mm-hmm. said. And so there's a problem in itself so you know how do you get out of that fortunately you can't unless somebody like from a wise place drags you out or tells you this Mm -hmm. um yeah there like humanity is dividing into two it's not just like one human anymore it's almost like the awoke human and and the dead human like the humans of three eyes humans of two eyes because all those people as i said are never going to change because they don't have this knowledge which means they can't speak to the voice in their head because it's made up of all this negative energy and you Mm. know the gods on the positive frequency how do you get there you can't it's like pakistan and india um becoming two different countries or um palestine and israel becoming two different countries you can't like merge them anymore which is what the problems are you like Mm. you just have to go along so now we're becoming like two different types of humans the awoke humans who have the positive vibration and the negative humans who don't and it's yeah that's that's pretty much it you can't you can't Mm. merge the two because it's like trying to put back together um the big bang once it's already blown it's Mm. already like too too late you can only go forward you know so do you think that like everyone innately either has it or doesn't or do you think everyone has the potential to like know themselves as god i feel like it's just yeah i'll ask you (laughs) so if some for example if you don't know god right let's just say voice in your head whatever right if you aren't if you haven't got a positive person in your life the voice of god the knowledge right then you're not going to know it exists if you went on youtube and saw these videos then you might see that and then choose to go down that journey right mm-hmm. but unless you've got somebody to give you that that god path that positive energy path you're not going to know it exists it's like going to a chinese buffet down that road when there's one around the corner from your house you didn't know so even though it's there you don't know it's there so mm-hmm. until you know it's there you're going to still go to that one um people humans can get to our level at any point right but they need someone like us to drag them there Right. Or, or tell them there, tell them where to go, show them the light, teach them the knowledge mm-hmm. without us mentoring them. They won't know it exists. And often people are so sucked into that negative pattern from generations and generations that it's going to it would take a lot of time for someone like us to teach them all of this. Then they'd have to say goodbye to all their friends and their family who are very negative people, probably drugs and alcohol and problems and running and stuff like that, that they're probably going to relapse anyway. So you'd have to get them to a, a financial state of independence where they don't need to go back to living with that family member. Mm-hmm. And again, it's science. Like nature's always going to 
gonna it's always gonna revert back like certain things are always gonna revert back if you hold an elastic band and you let go it's 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 always gonna go back um mm. like if everyone knew like the path many many years ago like the work path of being a leader then we wouldn't be to this level of humans wouldn't there wouldn't be this many humans on the planet because we'd all be fighting over taking control running businesses we wouldn't need anyone to run there'd be nobody to run a business for us and so therefore we'd all be independent people and so it just wouldn't be the same um mm. yeah yeah sense. sometimes like i think um i think a really important thing i've realized along the way has just been like to not to not put myself on a pedestal because like there's like two weeks ago I felt like the most depressed I've ever felt in like a long time I was going through a lot I was reprogramming a mental pattern of mine from a long time ago of like self-worth like deep really deeply rooted self-worth so like I think there's this there's this false pretense that once you get to a state of like awareness that you're not gonna go back you know what I mean like there's always ebbs and flows in every in everyone's in everyone's situation right like it's not all love and light it's not all like you know I know everything I'll show you the way so I think that 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 realization has just um it's humbled me in a sense and I think made me realize that I don't ever want to because I um when I was younger growing up I really felt the like comparison thing very heavily and I felt like um and this is something I self-created but it just I, I don't want to be um you know in victim mentality but this is what the reality was that um I really just put people on pedestals and just um created them out to be so much better than I was so I think like something that I never want anyone to feel is that like there's a power imbalance you know, like that I, I don't want to make someone else feel worse than they actually do. You know what I mean? And so I think I've realized, um, I'm just like in this role of like empowering. I'm going to like, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, like, you know, have a conversation with someone and empower them, but what they like, it's ultimately up to them to choose, to choose it or to choose to see it or choose to like see themselves as that you know inner inner god so um yeah like definitely definitely people do need to be shown in a sense but I think the whole idea of um it's just like people won't change until they want to people won't change until they hit that point of okay, I've had enough. I'm tired. I'm tired of living the same reality. I'm tired of, you know, being sick. I'm tired of being sad. I'm tired of being like, um, you know, constantly worried about money, whatever their thing is, they hit that point and then they decide to really change and, they, they, and then they like seek it out. And then the synchronicities happen, you know, but yeah, you can go your whole life without those things happening. But like, I just, I think it's a, it's a lifetimes thing. Like some people aren't meant to know are meant to have that realization in this lifetime. Some people just are going to be in that other state of awareness. And that's cool because like to know, like the contrast is everything in that, you know, like the contrast between different types of people. And then you, um, it gives, it gives us the opportunity to know ourselves as, um, like creators of something different, I guess, in the world. Like obviously in life we have to make money because everything is trading with money, right? But when you understand what really matters, it's happiness, which means it doesn't require money, right? Mm -hmm. And ironically, when you are like enlightened, you want to help and you want to help and empower everyone because you realize that you are trapped and you see the people are trapped and you want to help them. And mm -hmm. then you realize, okay, well, I need money to do that. And there's so much stuff online of people selling their their journey or how to get to their journey charging mm -hmm. fucking outrageous amounts of money right and i've gone through that i've done a full circle which means i was that person years ago until i realized that 97 percent of the people who buy your package buy it they want the change and then they relapse and then they hate against the scheme and then mm -hmm. they go back to their pattern and it's like i literally am getting rich off other people who 
who are so desperate for this change. Can mm. I live with myself in my big, you know, my big house, knowing mm. that I took from that poor person who literally saved up everything for this like one last opportunity? Could I do that? And the answer is no, I couldn't. So this is like I'm back to square one again, which mm. is how do I make money in a way where I'm empowering people and I don't feel guilty? And I realized simply by just telling your story and anyone like you could do it, telling your story and others hearing is so much more empowering and freeing than mm -hmm. buying a package of how you got to your freedom. Like I could tell people how I got to my level of enlightenment and what I went through. Um, and so I could tell them what they would have to do to get to my level. But everyone's story is different. Everyone's everyone starts in a different place. So you're just giving like the guidelines. And unless you know exactly the path that they've come from, you can't really undo all the knots. You're just sort of saying, OK, well, if you've got a knot there, undo it. And if you've got one there, undo it. But they want to get to the end that they're sort of running away from other knots that they haven't dealt with. And those knots are going to end up pulling them back so really mm -hmm. all you can do is teach your story inspire them and have them then find a way on their own path as you said people only change if they want to change you have mm -hmm. to reach the bottom in order to in order for there only to be a way up like that's just the sad truth like some people unfortunately they don't make it but those who are strong enough and reach the bottom it is literally only the way up like the rock mm -hmm. says once when his back's against the wall it's only forward and it's so true because you have nowhere to go but forward and you know I wanted to die when I was 21 and I put my foot down on my accelerator in the car and all of a sudden there was a car down this one row road and it was me 60 miles an hour and this car and at the last minute I just pulled out went up the curb missed the lamppost went down the curb onto the road again literally skimmed the car by like a millimeter and I looked mm. in the mirror and the car was just had his brake lights on and I just continued went home and then slept in my mum's bed because and then the voice in my head said it's all going to be okay so mm. I literally didn't want to be here anymore that fucking woke me up and it was like wow you're going to be all right and then from that day onwards it literally was only up because imagine saying you want to die I hate life no one understands you don't understand you don't get me whatever I fucking hurt myself want to die and then you keep mm. saying that and then, you, and then you almost have that death experience and you're like holy shit I don't want to fucking die I literally <laughs> don't want to die so again you need to reach the bottom to say mm -hmm. like what do you really want do you want to die here's some drugs take it or don't like you need to mm -hmm. reach the bottom in order to really make your decision it's like threatening to divorce somebody don't just keep threatening because you feel empowered by them saying oh please stay fucking like you know sign the papers now if you mean it if not shut up and let's move forward like mm -hmm. life is so big so much more than just petty bullshit so, yeah, you have to reach the bottom in order for that only the way to be up. It's almost like you have to ask that person on a date to see if they like you. Otherwise, you'll never know if they did. And then you go through all your whole life and then you meet them, say, 30 years later. And then and then you say, oh, by the way, I liked you. Me too. And then you cheat, have an affair and you fuck up your marriage and your kids. Like you have <laughs> to get it out of your system. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. you have to like go through the journey and I've realized to trying to mentor people and I want to mentor people and help people but I realized I can't literally help them I can only like say my story and that is helping them more than selling them a silly package and often a lot cheaper they're spending 50 pounds on a ticket to see me talk rather than fucking three grand on a scheme of how to get there like the difference is significant but yet it's so you'll you'll learn so much more like you have to be horse can only What's it called? You can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. That mm -hmm. is the epiphany of life. And, you know, we always try and think we can beat that or I'm different or, yeah, well, it's different. No, science says that it's with the same pattern. Like, mm -hmm. I fought I fought against the pattern. And 27 mm -hmm. years later, I realised just accept it and then flow. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think, too, like, within what you're talking about with the programme, um, I think since like the world that we exist in is such an instant gratification, you know what I mean, world where it's like, okay, I want this thing, I get it, you know, Amazon Prime two days, like everything just comes quickly and we're used to, we're spoiled, we're so spoiled in that sense, right? And I think that, yeah, like that's why weight loss, the weight loss industry is what it is, like diet pills and all these kind of insane things because like the work and the grind between like point A and B like, we don't want to do that. <laughs> it takes too long. Like, I'm not patient enough for that. You know, we want, we want the B, like when we're, and we're, we're just already standing at the A. And 
yeah, I think, I think people are so smart in these, in these like positions of power within their marketing. And it's like good, like amazing, good for them. But also like, it is this awareness that, um, like, like you said, you know, take responsibility for the fact that like, um, you want to be able to actually help people and not sell them a program and then just leave them. Okay. Bye-bye. Have fun. You know what I mean? Do your thing. You want to be able to support someone like deeply through it and like see them as another human being. You know what I mean? That this is another human being who has a story that is just as important as mine. That is just as like, they have family, they have friends, they have people that love them. They have like, they've had things in their life go wrong. They've had triumphs. You know what I mean? Like it's just connecting to the humanness in these people. And, um, just because I think so many people, so many people have gone their whole lives not hearing like the words, you can do it. I believe in you. I love you. Like you, like you have the power to create this thing or do this thing or be this person. And it literally is just about, yeah, seeing this person and being like, I freaking believe in you, you know, because yet yeah, a lot of people haven't heard that and, and often enough. So it's, they've only heard the opposite. And so, yeah, you, like you said before, you create that programming in your mind and then that becomes your story and then that becomes what you attract and then that becomes just your whole world. And then you attract, you keep attracting the same things. And then you think, well, this is my world. So how could I, how could I ever get out of something like this? Like, how could I ever live something different? And then, and then the cycle just keeps creating itself. So yeah, the the power of, being positive and giving somebody a compliment even if you don't believe it's true it's not about whether or not she's pretty that top looks good those shoes are nice doesn't that is not the point it's the power of positive energy and how they interpret what you are saying it's not about you it's about them like if you say to somebody they look amazing or just whatever you look good whatever it makes them feel good and they want to do more of what they were doing to make them feel good so they keep doing Mm. it and they get themselves to the light right these days people knock people before they've people if some if something isn't at a good standard especially when it's to their understanding of what a standard is which doesn't exist in the real world Mm -hmm. that negative really affects somebody compared to if it was positive even if you don't believe it saying yeah don't like the idea that makes them feel shitty it does Mm -hmm. like even if it doesn't matter like it could be anything it could be a painting planting some flowers if it's a negative response, it doesn't make you feel good. If somebody says that's really nice or that's really good, it takes you like two seconds to say that, even if you don't mean it, even if you don't even look to the plant. It feels good when you hear those words, like sounds are vibrations. And if it's a certain, certain words have different vibrations, as you know, to other things. So the power of just being complimentary and polite and positive, even if you don't believe it, makes it could change somebody's life literally that Mm -hmm. one compliment for that day when they're feeling shitty even if you don't mean it they do not know that you don't mean it and you'll never know and they'll never know whether you mean it or not it's besides the point it's just being positive all the time don't be negative there's just no need but that ironically you have to be fake positive in order to get out of a negative negative pattern because if somebody's a negative pattern and they're not doing things to a standard where it's going right so people compliment well, they're going to be stuck in that pattern forever because it technically isn't good enough. So you have to sort of kind of trick somebody into going down a path to see that that actually was the path that they wanted. It's like taking control of um, somebody and putting them in a, putting them somewhere where you knew they wanted, which they would never have gone there unless you put them there because they thought it wasn't there. And they go, oh, my God, fucking hell, this is amazing. This is what I wanted. You know what I mean? Sometimes mm-hmm. you just have to use a bit of force as long as it's for the goodness of of them and being positive. And I know this from a f- fact. I knew how negative energy affects me growing up. Like if I was like, like, dad, look at this, whatever. Is this a good idea? And he said, no, it would fucking destroy me. Like he didn't mean to be negative. He was just being truthful. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have to be, what's it called? Have to be, it's called like hard love or something. Um, Tough love. Yeah. It was you have to that. like experience the real world that no one's going to be positive and say this is amazing all the time. Right. So I had mm-hmm. to learn that, but also I didn't want him to be negative. I wanted to be like that. It's amazing. But the reality was it wasn't amazing. It was a load of mm-hmm. shit. And giving yourself false judgment at an early age 
thinking you're great all the time because your parents say you're great actually does harm because you get older in the real world your boss is that shit do it again you don't understand because dad always said it was great so again it's the perfect balance mm-hmm. of, of kind course. of doing enough to get there and then understanding that now you're here don't expect positive energy and compliments all the time because in the real world you just do your job and that's the end of it you've got to find your own empowerment but yeah mm-hmm. negative energy is destruction and positive mm-hmm. energy is is phenomenal what it can do Mm -hmm, definitely yeah I think I was definitely gonna say like tough love is really important because yeah like you can definitely get lost in the like oh yeah everything I do is great and then you're 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 doing these like not great things and then people just are are afraid to tell you or or whatever you've been conditioned into believe oh no this is good this is what people want this is what this is how I am whatever and then you just don't see it's it's kind of like that you create that fog again um, but yeah, I think, I think tough love is, is really, it's revolutionary when it comes from the right place. Like if you're, if you, if you have a friend or a family member or someone that you love and you can see them like creating a self-destructive pattern or habit again, um, if you're able to step in, like looking on as that observer or that witness with like total love in your heart, like for this person and be like, Hey, you know, like this is what I'm feeling. And like, maybe look at it like this. And I think it's all, it's all, it's all about the delivery. Like it's, if you come at people, you know, guns blazing and harsh and super like, um, abrupt, like people, we get defensive, we retreat and we, we bark back. Right. And I, I recognize myself doing that so much as I grew up, I would get so defensive and angry at people because like whatever we're do- we're all doing our best but a lot of the times it wasn't the greatest approach because it was very aggressive that the ways that I was told of certain things or patterns I was living in um and then people just backed off because they were so afraid of me barking back right but then I was in this state where I was in this unawareness of what I was actually doing to myself and my life and and things like that so um I think learning learning how to properly communicate and learning like learning communication in all its forms has been super transformative for my life because like um with these people that you love if you like if you present the truth from a beautiful place it it transforms relationships it transforms your life it makes your heart feel lighter it makes your like it makes everything feel lighter in your life when you just speak your truth coming from a good place and you're able to like unpack things with someone that um can hold the same space for you and and be patient with you as well so um yeah i think like a part of that all is is learning the the depths of communication which we're we're not specifically taught but yeah self-awareness and rapport was something Mm -hmm. that changed my life because like you as you said i used to bark back at people because they didn't get me like we're two different energies and it's like I want to be that energy I want to be accepted want to fit in mm-hmm. but I'm not that and so then you have all this anger and that you're not really fitting in that you're only there for the sake of it building up in you and then you bark back and yes all these people end up having shitty lives and we have the great life but at that point in your life you don't realize like why is it that I just can't fit in why am I barking back and then you go home and have a cry or whatever and it comes down to we're just two different energies we're not in harmony and that's not anyone's fault that's just the universe putting us here in this school and they happen to be in this school which is man-made in the real energy world we'd always attract to like-minded people um um so self-awareness of how I used to bark back at people and how they used to push people away even more and I would attack them for for treating me like that it was a vicious circle of pushing people further and further and further away and then the self-awareness of when somebody said to me once you know you want to be heard so bad yet you just every time you speak to somebody you just launch out everything mm-hmm. and hope they listen and you push them away and then I find somebody else and I kept doing that and luckily she was a lot older than me she was like 50 right and I was 18 and she understood me like like a son but also as an entrepreneur because her ex-husband was an entrepreneur right so she she nurtured me in a way that my parents couldn't because they didn't have the business mindset I did they were just like parenting me get a job be normal blah 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 and so she taught me rapport and every time I spoke to her, she she would say, low your voice, and I'd have to mimic her voice, and then she would speak at the same level. And then I had to keep at that level, 
speak slowly. I used to mumble, speak really quick. I couldn't fucking speak. I was a fucking nightmare. And Mm -hmm. she taught me self-awareness of being aware of how I'm being perceived by others. And I used to see, well, fuck, I don't care what they think. I'm just going to be me. Yeah, that's fine. But you'll push everyone away and you'll hate yourself, right? So you have to understand that you could be you, but you have to be aware of how others are perceiving you and realize where do you want to go? What do you want to achieve? And is by doing that in that room, helping you get to where you want to be, which is ultimately at that point in my life being liked and having friends, mm-hmm. which I never had and still don't. And the answer is, no, it's not. So then I have to match that energy level. And so you go into a social situation rather than knowing you're different and hating on everyone else. Just go down to their level match their conversation even though you know you're not the same just match their conversation otherwise you're going to be a monk living in a forest where all of his friends are just animals and trees and the reality (laughs) is that you're always going to be with people you have to learn to adapt with people knowing that majority aren't going to be in your level of awareness that is okay you can always find something to connect with in every single human any human there's always a way to connect with football gardening same tv program it doesn't matter and um and that's when I realized that rapport and self-awareness is the secret ingredient for anyone to change. But you say people get defensive. They get defensive when you say mm-hmm. things. So if it comes from a good place, people will always want to, to learn and change. But then it takes a, like a three-week pattern for them to adapt that into their, their life. It's almost like, I know I should be doing this, but they're right. I don't want to listen to them, but I know they're mm-hmm. right. And then three weeks later the change is implemented. And I find you can't focus on that change. They can't feel like they owe you the credit you've got to sort of realize oh they did it and just sort of move on they want to give themselves the credit you know what i mean you can't it's like they feel like you yeah got it's not over. our credit <laughs> it's theirs yeah. they did it yeah yeah you, they feel like you've got control over them because you told them to do it and they did it and so now it's like how hey, you listen to me that's not the mm. point you're trying to help them but mm. we our ego says we want to do it ourselves like we want to get that ourselves and unfortunately if you focus on it too much and you make it about you and how you made them change it's not going to work and your whole purpose is just ruined you know? yeah and then you do create the dynamic of like a power imbalance and then yeah. that person yeah just continually that like on the inside of them they feel less or they feel like oh this person I owe this person something or this person helped me when really like okay I just I just showed you a sign and then you chose to to follow the sign and and go along the path you know but um, yeah, like that, what you were saying was really interesting. I um, I was in the service industry, in the restaurant industry for like six or seven years. And um, I always found as much as I was like figuring out my life and I, I wasn't drinking at the time and I was working at a bar. So it was just everyone found it hilarious. But um, I always found it incredible because um, I just chose to look at it as a as a way to just interact with people and me- and make people's day because everyone that's coming and like pounding back drinks or whatever, like realistically there's something they're, they're like hiding from or masking. At least that was my experience. Right. Like I, I drank to, to not feel or numb or, or mask or whatever. And so, yeah, I think that was such a, a valuable teaching um, time period for me because I was just able to like have these beautiful conversations with people and light up people's day and like truly look at people like they were human beings and not just someone that could pay me you know what I mean and that's I think that's what a lot of um, the industry is like like you're just looking at people like a transaction and I think that really taught me to look at the person and be like this is a human being that's maybe had some some shit going on in their day and what if I just like paid the extra like two minutes of time to ask them how their day is going and what they do and people like just literally light up people because we're like we're not used to that type of level of interaction it's such a quick like hi bye here's your coffee here's your drink here's your this like enjoy you know there's like we're missing that that depth which you can't do all the time but I don't know I just I feel like it taught me a lot about connecting to the human and seeing seeing everyone as just someone that's worthy of like my time yes i used to work at a restaurant and um i found that if for example the chefs were stressed or the staff were stressed because the management was shit or whatever the pay was shit they wouldn't care about the people right they would Mm -hmm. see it as a job and a product like Mm -hmm. all these schemes of you know if you want to become a millionaire, success, enlightenment, monk, whatever, do this. They're no different to a fucking like beanie bag on the shelf. They're a product. 
right? Mm -hmm. You are selling, they're a product, but they're a human being. So mm -hmm. even if the circumstances are, are different, unfortunately, if you don't have guilt from doing that, because maybe you felt the pressures growing up or whatever, then you're not going to feel it. And I do believe that if you do a full circle, then you will kind of feel guilty and connect. But that's when you sort of light your fire again and realize, okay, I do have to make money in this life. Maybe mm -hmm. that's not the way. Maybe there's another way. And I realized that when you're stressed and tired, you just like cook the chips and put them on the plate. Job done next, please. But if you flip it, they're a human being who's come out for a nice day. They plan mm -hmm. this day. They like the brand. They're looking forward to the nice chips. They're sitting down and, and they want their food to be nice. They're paying like 10 quid. And all of a sudden it changes everything. Because then I think, mm -hmm. okay, if I was in a restaurant and I'm doing it, I'd be fucking raging if I saw those staff in the kitchen just talking and putting the chips down, just they go out for a fag. I'll be fucking livid, right? And it all comes down to seeing them as a human being and not just a product and job. Like if you look at something as a job, then it's just like a checklist. Done, 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 mm -hmm. done, done. But they're human beings. So mm -hmm. it's different. And when I decided to connect to humans is when I just just love fell in love with humans like it mm -hmm. wasn't about me anymore like when I was trapped it was all about me because I needed to find myself now I found myself now it's just about people and just speak I speak to any person and I speak to animals <laughs> okay I speak to random people as a human being like my sister like my mum like my dad like you like we've all got a different story I come from a different family but you're a human being just speak to anyone like they're your sister and your brother and they'll speak mm -hmm. to you like you're their sister and their brother and like when you go to the clubs and pubs and you you fancy a person it's you're scared to go to up to them and that's what the problem is you just you have a preconception already that they're judging you so you are not being you and that's what it all fucks up but it's like you and me now we're speaking like we are friends down the pub it's just we're mm -hmm. just two human speaking so mm -hmm. there's no judgment it's just speaking and mm -hmm. when I started to do that towards people people do did used to open up and you do start to heal them and they start to open up when they're realizing you're listening like I'm a good listener only because I had to learn to listen because I was so desperate to be heard that I realized mm -hmm. the secret was to listen because that was how it healed me. So now I listen to people and you do feel amazing just by the fact that you're listening. You don't even have to speak. Just being mm -hmm. there and the human being listening is good enough. And they heal themselves by speaking and working stuff out as they speak. That's why these podcasts are so good because by speaking, it's not about me. It's just about you speaking and by speaking for the first time when most people don't listen for fucking three minutes, let alone an hour, you have worked something out in yourself and have evolved to the next stage. And really, mm -hmm. I didn't do anything apart from having the understanding of what you mean in the first place does help because, you know, you, they have to actually understand. That's the power, understanding what they're saying. Mix mm -hmm. that together. You literally can heal any human being just by giving them 10 minutes of listening time for them to just rant and speak. It's not about teaching them how to do this and how to get there. It's about just letting them be heard. That mm -hmm. is the secret. Listen, rather than telling them how to get there, because well, they'll get to themselves. People will get like a, a fucking worm will find its way to the top of the earth. They have to mm -hmm. dig a hole and say, come this way. Like if you plant a seed, it will just grow around all the rocks. And that's, that's the thing. If you can let go of the money side to it and know that money will come somehow, just by doing that, then you won't feel guilty and you'll just be serving humans forever, which is what I want to do. Hmm. Um, wow, I love that. Just to, like help people because I know how trapped I was. And I could say, you know, my story was the worst, whatever, but everyone's got hard story. But I now want to just like help people because that's the best feeling ever. Mm -hmm. And if I can make money from it, fantastic. Because now I can dedicate my life to helping people whilst making money. Because as I said, I kind of have to justify why I shouldn't feel guilty because I kind mm -hmm. of do because I was such an entrepreneur, millionaire, want to take over the world and I've gone to the basis of basically a monk in a forest and now I realise, <laughs> okay, if I can help people, I need money because money can help people so I need to find a way to make money. How can I do that guilt-free? Talk or listen. Don't sell them bullshit, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Just be real for sure. Yeah, one of my, one of my good friends... Um, we, um, I'm a part of a community in, um, it's called Hamilton the city, but we also do Toronto events and it's called Kula Soul. And we've, we've created this community that just basically, um, we host different events, but the main thing, the main intention was, um, that it was born from is just like letting people be heard and like letting people know that they're loved and giving people love and giving people 
um, the platform to share a story, whatever it is. So we have these events where um, they're called Soul Talks, and they're not obviously going right now, but um, we are doing these online sharing circles. But Soul Talks is essentially an event where we host once a month that um, we have 10 speakers sign up. Like, we don't vet them ahead of time, whatever. They just, they come and they share, like, a seven-minute um, story, speech, whatever it is. Whatever's on their heart, they share it. And the revolutions in that room after, during, it's incredible. Because majority of these people, we're not, like, none of us are professional speakers. There's a, we, there's a couple um, speakers that we've gotten that have, you know, that do this professionally. But for the most part... It's just giving people a platform to speak and share their story. And it's so transformative. Like the first time I did that, I think it was almost a year ago now. I like, I released something I I never even expected to. And I didn't prepare a speech. I didn't like do anything. I just got up there and spoke from my heart. And that's what you see people do. And when you give people, when you when you have this energy of, no, I'm just here to listen to you. Like, I, I'm genuinely curious. I'm interested in what you have to say. Like, tell me. I want to know. I want to know about you, right? It's just, it's giving people the permission to, like, express themselves in a, in a way they perhaps haven't had the opportunity to before. So, um, yeah, honestly, the transformation emotionally um, that I've I've, like, witnessed for a lot of people has been really beautiful as a result of that. But... Yeah, so one of my dear friends had spoke about listening and just conversation in general. And he said something um, along the lines of um, a lot of people, you know, um, are in conversations and just while the other person is speaking, they're thinking about what they're going to say. They're not actually listening. They're not actually feeling the full impact of what's actually being said. So I honestly, I heard that and I was like, holy shit, that's incredible. I've never heard... I've never heard a way um, of speaking like that so eloquently um, put. And that revolutionized revolutionized a lot of the ways I talk to people. Because even even now, like, you know, you're 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 so excited and you're like, oh, I have this thing to say and I have this thing to add, but reeling yourself back and just truly feeling the impact of what that person has to say and then trusting in your own magic to create whatever you have to input to the conversation is it's beautiful to witness and then you just become so sound in your in your awareness and your um, connections with people because you're just trusting that it'll flow exactly that's exactly Mm -hmm. that's exactly the reason why I don't plan what I'm going to say there's Mm -hmm. something so authentic and amazing and magical and powerful when you don't know where the fuck you're going to go if you guys it was like if I was to go to a pub right now speak to somebody I don't know what I'm going to say conversation just flows so why wouldn't mm-hmm. it flow online it's mm-hmm. just it's, it's it's bollocks why would it not flow and i find this incredible right you know law of attraction pick up thoughts like i find that when i don't plan which i don't that because of the law of attraction and our thoughts are already connected like you putting out things that you would want me to speak about or things that we might speak about whatever i find that when i just speak i pick up on the thoughts that that other person's thinking about mm-hmm. and then we end up speaking about it like that just happens all the time like they're a I don't know a speech therapist or whatever but I didn't know that and I just suddenly think okay well let's speak about the quality of language and then I realize they're a speech therapist but that's Mm -hmm. because your energy is already going out into the universe and connecting to me and again conversation will just flow nature will just do what it's going to do if you plan stuff it's scripted and you're focusing on the next bit trying to find the link to the next bit where you're not even listening you're just focusing mm-hmm. on how can i join that there there's nothing authentic anymore just to just be speak just speak like people are all the same i'm 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 an enlightened person but i was the worst form of myself i couldn't speak i couldn't do anything like i was nervous i couldn't speak i didn't believe myself in my head i did but i couldn't do it on the outside and so when you realize everyone is pretty much this, exactly the same, they want to be heard, they want to speak. No one wants to be judged and they think everyone's judging. It's the same pattern, same pattern for me. Just be you and speak and no one's judging because they also feel like they're being judged and they want to be heard. And you realize mm-hmm. every fucking person is the same. Everyone who's at that level of enlightenment has come from there. People who are down there want to get there. Everything is literally 
the yin and the yang, the backwards and forwards. And as you said, if I don't maintain my discipline and my work and not making the same mistake twice and loving myself and being positive, you relapse back to all patterns. So again, mm-hmm. once you make it, it doesn't mean that you're always in heaven every day, as you said. Mm-hmm. Like people think monks are, for example. They have to continuously train and meditate. Otherwise, mm-hmm. they naturally will relapse. It's just if you don't keep moving when the, where, when the sun's moving, it's going to get dark. If you stand there, it's going to get dark. But if you keep moving, it kind of be light the whole time. We have to keep moving. Otherwise, it will get dark. Mm-hmm. We're no different. Every month, Definitely. it's no different to a, a homeless person in the street. He's just a human being on a different level of consciousness. You <laughs> have to keep moving. And it is hard. Being awoke is, you know, obviously it's not as hard as people who aren't awoke, but it takes work to always be disciplined and get up at the same time and go to bed at the same time, eat healthy. You know, it takes work, just mm-hmm. a different type of work, work of discipline mm-hmm. as opposed to a work of, I need to go to the gym and lose weight because I eat too much because I slouch around. It's a different type of work. Um, mm. Discipline is work. And I suddenly get the urge to have a big pot of Pringles. And then I eat the whole thing I wish I hadn't because I feel shit. You know, <laughs> it's the same cycle. We're no different. Yeah, definitely. But then you have that moment where, you know, the Pringles are gone and then you're looking at yourself and being like, okay, I could either looking at, look at it one of two ways. I can harp on it and be mad at myself and create more negative energy around it. Or I can just be like, oh, I just ate a can of Pringles. That's funny. Let's let's move on. You know what I mean? Like, let's remember that. Let's remember who I am, you know? And I think that's the danger too of like um, having something happen that you, you perceive as like a negative thing or a bad thing or something that you shouldn't be doing, whatever. And I think it's just realizing like we're – we're all just human everyone's human and everyone's still in their humanness and we all still fuck up and make mistakes like no one is this perfect human being that is never going to make a mistake again you know but it is it is this true test of how you respond to these situations happening in your life that you create this sense of power in yourself because you know like I wouldn't have been able to respond like that you know couple years ago a couple months ago however long it's been for each individual person coming into their awareness um and and then that coming through those hard times is when and you like test yourself and you come through those times and you really persevere and you you stick to your discipline and even though you don't want to that's when you prove to yourself like you're rewiring that pattern and this is what like joe dispenza talks about so eloquently like i'm obsessed with his work right now but the whole like looking at these two paths and visualizing like this is the same old path that I keep going down do I want to keep going down there I know that's the known like that's what I know that's I've played out this enough times I know how it turns out it's not fun or I can choose to see myself as going down another path of doing something else doing something new and I think I had that moment of feeling like I'm so tired of this, you know, I'm so tired of going down the same path. I'm so tired of being in the known, being in the predictable, like, like having that, um, I think what you said, relapse, like having that same thing happen over and over again. And a part of it was because I had had this inner belief of that. I would always circle back to, you know, um, the lows and like being that person that Oh, like you're just you're just that person, you know, you're not capable of doing these great things. You're not you're not this godly person that you think you actually are when you're when you're up here. Um, So it really is just choosing like, okay, I can see you. I can see these two paths in my mind, but I'm going to choose the one that I know is is ultimately better. It might be, you know, hard at some points, but I'm going to choose it. (laughs) you know and show up for it every day and if I don't if I have a moment where I forget that's okay I'll just remember in the next moment and give myself grace and give myself like compassion in spite of that because what else can I do (laughs) I can't keep harping on it growing up my dad always you know taught me everything right and that was part of the problem from a young age I was exposed to level of awareness all that amazing stuff mm-hmm. when I was I basically had a monk father right who taught me everything and at school no one had a father pretty much right so 
it, that's why I never fitted in because I was taught all this and from friends at school, not friends, people at school, right, and teachers and stuff. And then my dad was teaching me all this and I had all these questions, but then there was too many questions and he couldn't answer them all because then I started to have more questions. And then he, he doesn't know, like, you need to find fucking Monk and Buddha and Jesus and Joe Dispenser to ask these people. And at that point, there was <laughs> YouTube. So, so what the fuck do I do? So now that's what the Tourette's was and the excessive thinking and the medication mm. slowed my brain down where now I'm even more fucked because I've got more thoughts building up because I can't think about this stuff. And so I was, what I was to myself, did you know what I was going through? Like, why didn't you help me if you, if you knew? And, and he pretty much said, you were you were searching and that was powerful because as much as I wanted him to help me and I wouldn't want people to go through what I went through you cannot help people see the find the light you mm -hmm. have to just say it's in that direction keep going you're going to find it like as you said in your head you've got that going back and hating and relapsing and depression and why does it never work out path and the path of okay if I just keep doing this and this will happen people they chop me change that is a fucking like seven year path if you're lucky right mm -hmm. me or seven years right but if you if you choose that path it's going to take a long 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 time we're talking years you're a loose friend you've changed everything about your lifestyle and people don't want to change that they want to have like the cake and they eat it they want to keep this lifestyle Friends to go clubbing with, the same friends you always bitch about, you make you feel shitty. Like, you can't pick and choose, yeah? So, you it, like, I wish she, like, taught me or told me, like, where to go. But the point is that you cannot tell somebody where to go. Because even though we're all trying to get to the same place of freedom, everyone starts from a different place. It's like, well, it's like dropping off somebody in the middle of a desert. And they say, where are, where are you? Um, desert but where about I just fucking sand everywhere like, I don't know fucking where like well tell me where you are because otherwise I can't go and pick you up I don't fucking know like but you but you're told like head towards north and if you keep going towards north you might get to a road that was my mm -hmm. life my dad said head towards north and then that was it I was on my own for seven years and mm -hmm. it was dry and I had no drink no food no water there's grizzly bears after me <laughs> like, the point is that people have to get themselves it takes a long time and if you go down that path, you've got to keep going until you get to the main road. Mm -hmm. Like imagine dropping off in desert Mexico. You've got to keep going for miles and miles and miles. You can't get pissed off and angry and all oh, my legs hurt and then go back because it's fucking 100 miles that way. You'd like, you might have a thousand more miles to go or a mile to go. Or you can go back 100 miles and realize you're in the same position as you was before. You've got to keep going and then you'll see the light. You've got to go through the woods to get to the beach. You can't stop halfway and then choose to go left or right. Keep fucking going. And people... Yeah. They don't keep going because they think it hasn't happened yet or it's never going to happen. Law of attraction doesn't exist. Go back to their shitty job. You've got to keep going. And how do you mm. tell somebody to keep going? The point is that you can't. You just have to guide them there. And if they've got the energy and the enlightenment, and they'll, they'll keep going. Tell them where to go. They'll keep going. But you can't mm. help them as much as you want to. And I really have to, I had to accept this. I can't. I tried to teach so many friends and I lost them because I became their parent. I became mm. their authority figure. I became their, I knew their weaknesses about them and their vulnerabilities. And they didn't feel, as you said, they feel like you're above them because mm. you now kind of know their, their, their weak spots. And I never saw these people again, ironically, when I helped them and I enlightened them and I teach them and I taught them because they just couldn't see me the same. Like, I've realized you've got to choose to be their friend on their level, drink, have sex, fuck about and do shitty stuff, see them in pain or try and let set them free and then never come back. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like, do I set a bird free that's in pain or do I hold on to it because I haven't got any friends otherwise? And at the, end, the it has to come down to feeling. And yeah. ironically, you set birds free, you get that feeling, they fly and you meet people on your level who ironically you don't really see often because they're really content by themselves. Mm -hmm. So really just the monk in the middle of a forest by himself. Mm -hmm. And that's the moral of the story that yeah. we just have to be a monk in the middle of the forest by ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> but that honestly, that's the beauty of, um, especially in a time like right now, the, um, the amount of connections that you can create from like a million miles away. And um, that's the lovely thing is that you have all these people around the world who you know um align with you you know like are are um reading the same book you know what i mean reading off the same page and um I, that's what i that's what i really do love about you know the, the technology that we have as much as we say it's it's evil sometimes it's so i'm so grateful for it definitely but um yeah i love that 
Yeah, that's the thing. Like yin and the yang, there's always two parts. There's two parts of humans, negative humans, positive humans. The energy affects your biology. You're going to be a diseased person versus somebody who never gets a cough, right? So when I understand yeah, people, they knock social media. If you focus on anything, it becomes more of it. Focus on the bad, more bad comes. Focus on the good, good comes. As much as there is so much bad for social media, especially for young people, there's so much good for social media especially for young people, right? Mm -hmm. If you sit on social media and see all this fake tits and do your teeth and stuff, you're going to fucking want to kill yourself because you're going to get your fake tits and you feel like I'm still not happy. But if a young person reached out to a Canadian person like you who's spiritually awoken, who's been on the same journey, now that's amazing. Now there's just as many problems as there are solutions. So there's just as much of everything. You just have to know the alternative is there and don't mm-hmm. focus on it. Because, yeah, I used to hate social media because of how it was making me feel. I didn't know there was like this type of social media. Mm-hmm. So as much as it's good and bad, you do have to focus on the good because there's always the opposite. And it's yeah. truly you have to really embrace that. Like it's hard to really understand like when there's good and bad. How can you not focus on the bad? And it's like life is made up of negative vibration and positive like sperm and the egg night and day it's always made up of two it's not just one so you have to know that and focus just on the one that you want Mm -hmm. it's hard to grasp and you know i have to remind myself like because i'm a human still these certain things because you do start to relapse and go into the middle and the middle is both you know both of everything um gotta keep going yeah no i think like the the contrasts are so important and i think um the the interesting like dichotomy of social media is like there's everyone is you know on this platform looking for something you know they're looking for like validation or like um maybe something just um like a new product or like someone new to follow or like it's always that like new hit right of something and I think I've been I've been watching it like the past couple of weeks in myself and you know like you said I'm not I'm not a perfect human and I have those moments too where I you know you kind of like f- find yourself getting into the 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 darker parts of it but I had this moment I think it was last week now where I was just like what if I just changed the story what if I just changed the story and chose to you know have this especially now that I'm not having my normal social interactions with people that I have like beautiful in-depth conversations with person to person what if I just chose to like see this as my social life like for a couple hours whatever I get on I get on the phone I have beautiful conversations I meet new people you know I put like positive energy into like my accounts online as much positive energy as I would in my pre- in my physical self if I'm having a conversation with someone. So, and I think that's that's been I've had so many beautiful like conversations in the past like couple of weeks and like been able to connect with so many people and have found so much flow in my writing and just felt so expansive in that because it's I've just chosen to choose that other path of like looking at it like I could look at it like this. But I could also look at it like this and look at what that could create for my my experience. That could create a much more beautiful experience for me. And then if I have a if I have a if I'm in a beautiful experience, then I'm feeling I'm feeling good. I'm creating from a good place. I'm feeling in flow. I'm doing the things that I wanna that I know um, you know, help me be that better person. It's just like this this beautiful cycle. So yeah, I, it, it is, I think ultimately it's just like developing that awareness around like, what am I, what is my like purpose here? Like, what am I looking to get out of this situation? Or what am I looking to give to this situation? And I think like, I think the what am I looking to get part is, is that like, that is the um, overarching like feeling of social media. Like, what can I get? What can I get? Like how many more followers, how many more likes, like just this never ending quest of like more. Right. But I flipped it and I was like, how can I choose to give? Like, how can I just give in whatever capacity? I think you said like serving humans, how can I serve humanity today in my small capacity? You know what I mean? How can I do that? So 
it's 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 just been so revolutionary for for me to feel like that and feel like um just genuine connection based off of like switching the story I guess yeah that comes down to letting everything go not giving a fuck and what comes back comes back and what doesn't doesn't matter Mm -hmm. just keep doing you like posting a post and then looking at it for likes and who watched your story like if I'm if I put out something on my story I don't check who's watched because I realized that like lectins in food right is you know what lectins are Mm -hmm. If if you put food with lectins in your body it's going to want more of the same mm-hmm. okay if you look at somebody if you look at your story and certain amount of people liked it versus yesterday and it's like two less you think okay what's different and you start to you, you go into a, a different cycle of okay i need to post a different time I need to do this instead it is disastrous it doesn't exist it's just like some days it rains some days it doesn't so i don't look at the stories so if you post great stuff because you want to just put out good stuff People naturally are attracted to that and that would be in the form of a follow. But if mm-hmm. you're doing it just to get a follow and then you don't get two followers when you got three yesterday, the whole fucking point is, is gone. Now you don't want to post anymore because you aren't getting the followers. That's bullshit. Mm-hmm. It's almost like, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a website called Chatterbait. It's like people having sex on camera, right? And they're mm-hmm. literally waiting for people to tune in and watch before they start doing it. I'm like, wrong. You have to do it first. Then people will pay and tune in. And get <laughs> do you know what I mean? They're waiting for that. Yeah. They're waiting for the reaction. They're waiting for the followers before they post. You're supposed mm-hmm. to post. Like, fuck about the followers. And you've got too many. It's mm-hmm. the opposite. Everything in life is the opposite. Like, give, 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 give. Like, mm-hmm. I've, as I keep saying, life is about money because it, everything trades in money. But when you just serve humanity and just do good and just speak and help people, Money just comes. It could be in the form of, I'll buy you lunch. That's maybe five quid, you know? It just comes. And Mm -hmm. it is easier said than done because when you haven't got any money and you've got bills and you want to move out and stuff like that, you're like, when the fuck is it going to come? And then you realise, just keep focusing on yourself, keep Mm -hmm. learning, keep building, keep putting the money into myself. I had a podcast with someone the other day and I said, should I start trading or should I do my podcasting and hopefully somehow somebody asks me to do speaking events where I'll get paid? And he said... Everyone wants the quick buck right now. They're always mm-hmm. chopping to this, to that. YouTuber, spot of, you know, drop shipping, Amazon. Nobody's investing in themselves. You invest in yourself, it's forever. 80 years on the planet. If you invest in a product, it's for as long as people are using Amazon, right, for example. Mm-hmm. So, and when you invest in yourself, the money doesn't go anywhere. Like, the knowledge doesn't go anywhere. And the more mm-hmm. you invest in yourself, the more others don't, the more you have knowledge, the more people come to you. It's just the way it works. But it is mm-hmm. hard. When you haven't got any money, you know, 27 living at home like I am, destined to be on stage, praying for like this, someone's going to hire me one day. It is hard when, as you said, <clears throat> you have to remind yourself, just keep doing what you're doing. Don't have any ego. Don't have any ulterior motive. Don't plan anything. So I'm thinking about the money. Just be you authentic. And being you authentic these days is a high trait which is in demand because no one's themselves everyone's editing stuff that's why i don't edit this shit because it's just seeing two humans you've never met speak everything's edited they choose like youtubers they choose what they want you to see and you see hi welcome to youtube he's not that positive all the time he's laying in bed afterwards like just on his instagram like we all are right so (laughs) just being yourself like just being yourself is a power and it attracts people to be themselves. That makes you feel good when you attract other people who want to be themselves. And then that feeling is so addictive that it isn't about the money and money just comes. And it's something you have to grasp. It is, uh, it is a law and you just have to like learn it. Like, you know? Yeah, it is. It is. It is definitely difficult. Like you were saying, you know, when you're in a situation where um, you're like, bound by these human things right like work and you know you keep um, you're in an environment where you don't necessarily feel like um, oh this isn't very a positive environment or whatever you're in the situation of but like overcoming that and just like you said just like um, keep showing up for yourself and keep like doing digging every single day like digging digging like put the shovel in the ground and just put in that work every day um no matter how little, no, no matter how much you just showed up, like it's so, it's so, so transformative. And it is hard. It is hard definitely to have the trust like, oh, this will come and the money will come or this opportunity will come. But I think it's, it's like we we're saying when you're just like a genuine human being and you, you don't like, 
when you're not looking like, okay, how can I do this so that I can make money, so that I can be free, so that I can be a millionaire and blah, 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 right? Like, it's the whole, what would you be doing if you didn't get paid for it thing? The answer is this right now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like, how amazing is that? Right? So it's like, like putting out that energy to being like, I love this thing because it makes me feel more creative. It makes me feel more connected to people. I'm curious, whatever it is. Um, you just create more and more of that. And then you just never know who you're going to connect with that will create a new opportunity for you. And just like the synchronicities that life serves you, you look back years later and you're like, holy shit, I had no idea that that person or that place or that opportunity that um, I took was going to land me here, you know? And I, I've i been so reflective this week and just been in so much gratitude looking back on the last couple of years of my life and and kind of connecting those dots and realizing wow I didn't I was so on like the micro level and I I zoomed out to the macro level and saw it from above and was looking looking kind of at my life being like holy shit like all the things that I thought weren't going to work out and didn't work out were were for something you know like they they didn't work out for or X reason or Y reason because it um, it just it took me someplace better and I couldn't see it at the time so you're kind of stuck in that mindset of like oh like I want that thing or why can't why isn't that thing coming to me but having that trust that like I think I read somewhere that the university that responds in three one of three ways it's either yes um, not right now or something better and I I like live my life by that. And just that knowing of like, if you're in a situation where you're not getting the thing you want, or you're, it's not happening for you, you just kind of have that little nod to the, to life, whatever you believe in. And you're just like, oh, I know, I know it's going to be something better. I know like this, this looks good on paper or this looks good in front of me, but I know it'll be something better or like something more meant for me. Yeah. So for growing up, I've realized from looking back that the same pattern happened over and over again. I Mm -hmm. wanted something, so I headed in a similar direction, like north, for example. And then when I got there, it was just a bit true north. So if I wanted Mm -hmm. something and it didn't happen, I'd be angry, I'd force it to happen and it wouldn't happen, and then something else would happen. And at that point, it's just, okay, whatever. But looking back and linking everything, all the things that didn't happen, something else happened better. Mm -hmm. So when I now put that at present, into the future I know something doesn't happen not to force it you think something better is going to happen like it not it might it fucking will it's going to happen because it's the same pattern my whole life so as you said not now something better or whatever it's so true um I tried every single way to make it growing up I've tried everything like I I'm somebody who likes to jump in and learn my mistakes or get myself out so there's like this um thing online to make money this way I'll do it even if I lose money, I don't care. Like these, these, the uh, the pyramid loom thing that's coming around at the moment. You know, mm. I'd I'd likely just do it just because it's fifty fifty. I might get it, I might not, and I'll learn from it. And then I, re- I literally, I'm online now. I'm seeing all the stuff going around now that I've been doing, not having done, but I did over seven years ago. Because obviously, when you're ahead of time, everyone else catches up and everyone starts to sell stuff online and shit like that. I'm like bloody hell, drop shipping. That was years ago. Um, <laughs> I realized that. I have gone down all these different paths, drop shipping, Amazon, YouTube, you know, pyramid. And and it all goes back to the basics that you do that for that minute of your life. And that's not supposed to get you there. You're not supposed to be a drop shipper or YouTuber or an Amazon person. It's just to get you to that level of awareness and understanding and how to run a business and knowledge and sales and marketing. You take that and you go to the next bit. That's why all these packages, like £3,000 package to, to do this and do that, need to do this and to do that. You shouldn't think you're now literally going to be that thing in that industry. Mm-hmm. That has taught you skills from a person who's gone through that process. It should be a stepping stone to get to the next stage. Should it be three grand? Well, if you've got three grand, then why not? Apart from that, it's just the knowledge of any package, right? Mm-hmm. You never go down that path and then keep going and be like, become a Facebook marketer, right? It's just mm-hmm. if it's not what you're thinking before it came into your life, you haven't got the passion, the drive anyway. Looking back, actors and musicians and everyone who's successful, they were obsessed. Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, they were obsessed. 
They couldn't get it out of their head. He had to create the iPhone. He had to create this electric car. He had to do this. Microsoft, these are people who did something because they just had to do it. They, they were so passionate about it. They're richest fuckers on the planet. Warren Buffett, he still drives a 30-year-old car that he had 30 years ago. He's the richest guy on the planet. What does that say? Just do what makes you feel good mm-hmm. and money will come. Like, it, that's exactly, as I said, I've fa- tried so many ways to make money, right, that I just surrendered to nothing and just was, I decided just to be me, my authentic self. Everyone kept saying, you're so authentic, you're so you, you just you all the time, blah, blah, blah. I amplified just being me, telling my story. You realize that is enough, just being you, telling your story, and money comes. But it's not about the money anymore because it's about just happiness. And as you say, what would you do if you could do something for the rest of your life? Steve Jobs would make computers. Ed Sheeran would play guitar. I would talk and help and heal people. That's what mm-hmm. I'm doing for the rest of my life. So I'm trying the only thing I haven't done, which is doing something that I'm passionate about, something I'd do for free. And then if it was Law of Attraction bollocks is real, <laughs> which it is, hopefully, money will come. And that is the end of it. And people want money now. So they chop and they change and they do this and do that. It comes over time. I'm off the podcast for years for one person to hire me and pay me fucking 50 quid right mm-hmm. i've no other choice yeah. because no other path leads to real happiness this is the only path so 50 quid is better than nothing you know what i mean yeah yeah i think it's just like money is like the vehicle to freedom right and just like not being like tied to um like a job that you feel you need to go to out of oh i just need to like work to live essentially right and um yeah that old model that old model is definitely not a thing anymore i think um a lot of a lot of people are waking up to realizing like i can be creative with the way i want to live and i don't have to like play by the the rule book that everyone else has has handed to me or or played as well and says oh yeah like this is the only way you know there's there's creative ways to to get that freedom and yeah i think like yeah money is just a vehicle for freedom so that when when you've hit the state, when you're someone that wants to help and give and serve, then you use it for that good, right? You're using it to to truly help people, and you're not you're not harming, and um, you're contributing to making the world um, better in general. Okay, I feel like this is the high point to end this. Um, anything mm-hmm. you want to speak about before we end mm-hmm. it? No, I feel like that was so good. We we bounced right back off each other. <laughs> um, Ed, do you, want, do you want to plug anything? Website, social medias, links? Um, yeah, so my Instagram is at Karina Noyes, C-A-R-I-N-A-N-O-Y-S. And um, the collective that I was talking about is called Kula Soul. We're at Kula with a K, K-U-L-A dot soul on Instagram. And, um, yeah, I, on my Instagram, I share a lot of my writing and, uh, just a lot of my feels around life in general and, um, cool. So we, we do online sharing circles every Sunday on zoom currently, uh, throughout quarantine, but we're, we host events in like the Toronto area, um, in normal life, but yeah. Okay. Right. I'm going to stop the recording right there and I'll say goodbye. Thank you.